The struggle that I went through the housing has scarred me for life. And it didn't have to be that hard. My favourite part about my bedroom is that I have it. <laughs> You know, I think that sometimes people fall into homelessness because, like, life is hard. <laughs> you know, it's not easy. And especially in a kind of world like what we live in, you know, it's even harder because it's not every man in the community, it's every man for himself. That's why people do just walk on by people that are just, like, you know, helpless on the street. Sorry, ain't my problem. See ya. There's no community anymore. I was 16 when I moved into the hostel. At the time, things were just unstable at home. And moving out was, doesn't even mean to say that, um, it doesn't even mean to say that the hardship ended, the hardship started, you know, so. Yeah. When you hear the word homeless, you think of someone laying under a cold bridge at night, but there's so many different levels of homelessness. Having a home is a home that you can put your stuff out there and be like, this is mine. And that's not a room in a hostel. It's not sleeping in your car. I was studying at college when I moved into the hostel. I've always had a passion for dance and, you know, I think being good to my body seeped into loving myself, seeped into creating a lifestyle for myself which I could be proud of and also could be happy in. Just the fact that I had suffered a lot, I think dance was like my anchor, really. I see eyes full of pain and regret. I see men that claim that they would be radically different to the men that came before them, but sometimes, just sometimes, they find that they embody that which they once despised and it breaks them. I'm working with the poet Rashida Pagema, who is an incredible lady. With homelessness, there's like this kind of pornographic, almost gay. It's not they cute. Like like, clickbait. That's, that's exactly what it is. It's clickbait. Well, we've been working together really like a team, putting my story into a poem. And whilst our voyeuristic preferences would probably be appeased by stories of sleeping on the streets, rather than pontificate over the pavements, I'd, I'd rather, rather deliberate, deliberate the, cracks. the cracks. And the cracks in people who like ignore this issue and you know people who find themselves in this situation systemic bolts that have not been trained for far too long some of the things i have witnessed and experienced throughout this time will take a lifetime to understand if you knew what laid behind my eyes and my mind would you judge if i told you had no better life what if we were all one consciousness one, one mind. mind would it be as easy to just Children can come from families that don't have the support or skills or the mind frame to keep on top of the challenges of everyday life. When you throw different things into the mix, like maybe possibly someone struggling with uh, alcohol addiction or someone struggling seriously with mental health problems. Um, I think that it's quite easy for children to find themselves in a position or young adults, teenagers, to find themselves in a difficult situation when, you know, that's not what anyone wants. Um, but it can happen to anyone, and it does happen a lot. Yeah. Oh, that 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 okay. I like the way that you've written it as well. Like the lines are 
smaller, they're more concise. Mm. And mine's is more like sentences from a book. Because <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot to say, girl. I know, girl. <laughs> <laughs> This is not a story about displacement. This is a story about capacity. Rather than pontificate over the pavements, I'd rather deliberate the cracks. The ones we slip into and those that flicker with just, just enough, enough light to, to bring, bring us back. What if we were all one, one consciousness? One mind. Would it be as easy to just walk on by? You see only where I sleep at night. Not a body and mind intertwined in the pursuit to survive. Both have carried me from my pits to my glory. And both stand strong now in the telling of my story. Yes! yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. People hear that word homeless and they do think of someone who, oh, you know, they've just ruined their life, they've gone down the wrong path. It's just so oblivious to the reality of the world that we live in. It's not a problem that should be brushed under the carpet because, you know, these young people are going to be the future. It's going to take some work for me to heal those aspects of PTSD from losing housing all the time. I don't know. It could be so different, you know? It really could. It could be so different.